Hey, what's going on, everybody? Ready here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. So today we're gonna do a guide on Skull Crusher. He is an Ogren Tribe's epic champion, and he's one of the three counters in the game. On his A1, he attacks one enemy, places a 50% heal reduction debuff if the target's defense is lower than this champion. On his A2, places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. Places a counter attack buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. Places an unkillable buff on this champion for one turn. His passive decreases the duration of all debuffs on this champion by one turn at the start of each turn. And for his aura, he increases ally resist and faction crypts by 45%. Let's go ahead and take a look at his artifact. We're mainly going to be using him on clan boss, so that's the kind of build that we did for him. We went with lifesteal and then an offset here, and I'll show you why. So for his weapon, lifesteal has crit rate and crit damage. These stats are good for skull crushers, so that way he can recover more hit points with his A1, so that way you're not stuck always waiting for a war master proc. But if you cannot get these stats, it's fine. Just normally look for hit points, defense, and enough speed. So that's pretty much what most of the gear has, hit points, defense, and some speed to make sure that we have 171 speed for the counter. And then for his chest, we have a defense percentage chest with good speed rolls, and that allows us to also run defense percentage boots with speed roll. For his jewelry, we went with defense, defense, and defense. His total stats, 171 speed, which is exactly the speed that you want. And then he has 4,800 defense, almost 4,900, and 41,000 health. These are pretty good Skull Crusher stats. His skills are fully booked. This helps once again with the damage so that way you can recover more health from Lifesteal, but this is not necessary. The only book you really need is for his Stonewall, so that way his counterattack is at a three turn cooldown. For his Masteries, we went with Offense and Defense. The important masteries here really are War Master. And then for defense tree, we want some extra defense. Blast Proof, so it decreases damage received from AoE attacks. This is really important for clan boss. And then down here, we have a 50% chance to counterattack when this champion loses 25% of their max hit points. And we also have a 20% chance to counterattack an enemy when they apply a stun, sleep, or freeze debuff. So we're going to have a lead. And that lead is going to be receiving the stun, so that way Skull Crusher has a 20% chance to actually counterattack and once again recover more health so that way he doesn't die on us. So we're going to go ahead and run him on Nightmare Clan boss. Ultra Nightmare went to Spirit. It's not going to be a good test for Skull Crusher. So we're going to hop here into Nightmare. And obviously we have Valkyrie and Martyr, but this is not... I'm not going to use them because this is not a guide for them. I don't want to do a double counter with Martyr or Valkyrie. I kind of just want to show Skull Crusher and what Skull Crusher can do by himself because, for example, in my account, I still don't have Valkyrie or Martyr. So we'll run all 10 as lead. We'll put in Bad L and then we'll, we'll put in Skull Crusher. No, not Rogue Guard. Skull Crusher right there. And uh, let's go ahead and run it and see how much damage we can do. I'm hoping that we can do a one key, but who knows? I have done the one key before. Not with this particular team, but most of these champions were used. And we'll defense up. And counter. I think that Rosin going first and being fast enough, he will not use Bog Down on Auto. I'm at least hoping. Let's refresh Defense Down Weaken. Apply Decrease Attack, and we could probably go ahead and run it on Auto now. Yeah, see, so when, when Rosin goes first and he's above like 181 speed, he won't use Bog Down on Auto, so that's kind of important if you want to maximize your damage. And then we have Bad L going second, so that way he can clear the stun from all 10. Or let's say you're running Tyrell, it'll be, it'll be the same thing. You either want to cleanse or a block debuff, so that way you're getting those turns and getting a chance to proc, decrease attack, and also doing extra damage at the same time. If you 
don't have all these legendary champions. You could run Tyrell. You could run a Cult Brawler as your Poisoner. You could run, let's say, Grizzly Yarl as a block debuff, so that way you don't need to have a cleanse. Rosin is kind of... Rosin, Draco are kind of the only decreased defense and weaken down options for clan boss. Obviously, Venus is as well, but that's even harder to get. So if you don't have one of, two, one of these two, it's going to be difficult to do as much damage, but if you run Tyrell, he does have a decreased defense, and then you could just run another Poison or another Damage Dealer instead of Rosin. Obviously, you won't do as much damage, but this composition will still work really, really well. The main thing is, if you build your Skull Crusher properly, and he has enough defense and hit points, he will live long enough and protect everyone else. And then if everyone else has defense masteries as well, they'll take less damage and he will last a lot longer. Honestly, this team is built for Ultra Nightmare. I 3 key Ultra Nightmare with, well, with Valkyrie and Martyr. I 3 key Ultra Nightmare with a similar comp, with a similar comp to, to this, but... If we can one key this, it will still be a really good clan boss run. And seeing as how Skull Crusher is an epic, he is a lot easier to get than the legendary counter attacks. And he does perform really, really well on the clan boss. So this is why we're going to go ahead and show him. With double counter, if you do have it, this does become much, much better. Especially if you have Valkyrie. If you do have Valkyrie, you can run Skull Crusher in Stalwart gear, and he will actually perform even better than he does in Lifesteal gear. But without Lifesteal gear here, he will lose too much health as the fight goes on, even with Bad, even with bad L here. So Stalwart gear is not the best option unless you do have Valkyrie. I'll probably do a Valkyrie guide down the road, and then I can run Skull Crusher and Stalwart gear, and I can show you guys what I what I mean. But his ally protection stacks with the Stalwart, so he will take a lot less damage from AOE attacks if he has Stalwart on, and that also works really really well. But like I said, you have to be careful with that because you either need a Valkyrie shield, or for example, if you get a really fast battle, probably around like 270, 280 speed. I think I've done a I've done a build and account where we put Skull Crusher in Stalwart gear and we had a really, really fast Bad L and he was a Bad L was able to keep up enough continuous heals up that way Skull Crusher was still able to survive without the life stealer. Altan and Rosin do both have pretty high crit rate and crit damage. Trying to get as much damage here as possible. But as you see, they do also take more damage. So you have to be careful with that. I can kind of do that because I'm running Bad L here. Alright, Skull Crusher got stunned there. But Bad L was able to cleanse it, which is good. If Skull Crusher does take the stun here and you don't have a cleanse or a block debuff. You're going to lose a turn of counterattack and therefore lose a lot of damage. Ouch, he's starting to hurt. Also, as I was mentioning before, if you have maybe Black Knight and you don't have any of these other legendaries, you can run Black Knight and he will keep a permanent defense up. This will allow whoever is getting stunned to take a lot less damage from the actual slam down attack or the single target stun attack because during that attack we actually lose defense down and that makes us take a lot more damage from the actual attack. So see right here, the Altair is going to lose defense down and if you had defense up here, Sorry, he was going to lose. He lost defense up there. 
and he took a lot more damage than he would if he had defense up. So running somebody else that has defense up will also work on this team. Crusher does have really low accuracy. He will still land. He will still occasionally land the heal reduction. You're definitely trying to avoid that and maximize your maximize the amount of debuffs you have with poison, decrease defense, weaken, and decrease attack. Alright, we're getting good procs on Warmaster. It's very important for Skull Crusher to proc Warmaster because you don't want him to fall super low health because once he's low health, see like right here, if he doesn't proc Warmaster, he's going to get targeted and most likely killed. But he proc'd it, so now all 10 is going to take the hit. And all 10 is down. We're losing our defense up from all 10 and our stun target and our decreased attack. So this run isn't going to latch, last much longer. Ouch. As I was saying, this run isn't going to last much longer. 35 million damage. A pretty good nightmare attempt. This can obviously be better, but these people are all built for Ultra Nightmare with Valkyrie, so I need them doing damage so that way I can still 3 key Ultra Nightmare. But if you made them a little bit tankier, especially all 10, or if you ran a defense up, this run will last longer and you will be able to get 40 million damage for one key on Nightmare Clan Boss. And that actually works out nicely because if you can get one key on Nightmare and you can 3 key Ultra Nightmare, then you can get maximum chests for both Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare every single day. Which is really nice because Nightmare can still drop pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and take a look at his artifacts again real quick. As I mentioned before, I'm running Lifesteal, which is necessary because of the composition that we're running. It does have crit rate and crit damage on some pieces, which works out nicely because he will hit a little bit harder and therefore recover more health on his A1. And for his chest piece and boots, we're wearing defense percentage. If you are able to get boots with defense percentage uh, with speed rolls, you can run defense percentage boots, and that will definitely work out better than just running speed boots and defense and defense here, because this way we have more health, and that way we gain more health back from battles with continuous heal, or let's say you're running somebody else with continuous heal, like Jarek, for example. So with the more hit points, he recovers more health from. From continuous heal and this way you can have more defense as well his total stats 4899 defense which is pretty nice defense if you ran defense percentage gloves here he i think he had like 5600 defense but his health was only 30,000, which i don't really like his accuracy is not important unless you're running him on something like fire knight where you need him to land the heal reduction so if you're using him just for clan boss, which most people do with Skull Crusher, this is kind of how you want to build him. You want to build him 171 speed, as much defense and good hit points, and then he doesn't really need accuracy. If you can get crit rate and crit damage, it's good, but if you can't, it's fine. For his masteries, once again, defense and offense trait. These two masteries are really nice because if you can get a little bit of RNG towards your side, he will counter when he takes more than 25% of his max hit points, which does happen quite often in clan boss. And also, if somebody gets stunned, which the stun target was all in there, so he has a 20% chance to counterattack here as well. It's not very consistent, but it does help. And you can technically get a longer run if this procs, and for example, you didn't proc Warmaster on your actual attack beforehand. I think that's going to do it for today's guide, guys. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.